so my envy play is uh, Dostoevsky, um, which is not about the great Russian novelist, though uh, the play does start with some of his words. Um, it's actually about two two more um, former friends turn turn frenemies, uh, which has become a, a recurring theme in this collection. Um, but essentially, one thinks that he's caught the other one uh, watching porn in the workplace uh, actively. Um, and so the one who's caught him, um, it's, it's RJ who catches Clint and he's just milking this for all it's worth that he's going to get him fired. He's going to, uh, he's always, you know, that he's pretended to be friends, but he's always hated him and had all of these issues, um, with him. And, you know, the person that RJ married was the love of his life and RJ never knew and all of this stuff. Um, and then it, it ends up blowing up in both of their faces and they, it, it ends up being very awkward and horrible for everybody involved. Um, and this, this one is, is a, has a really interesting journey because it started with just like the superficial comic conceit of um, catching somebody watching porn actively in the workplace. Um, but as I really started drilling down on it in terms of the psychology and the hurt um, between this guy who's been harboring all this resentment um, and then there's a bit of, of a twist at the end that that also speaks to another character um, who, despite perceived success and uh, money, power, uh, position, etc., cetera, um, has no connection to people that are important to him, has no way of coping with the world um, in a way that he can outwardly exist. He has to do things in secret and in private. Um, and uh, it became a, a much more complex play as... As, a, as I was writing it and as it was produced, um, that it's like, wait a minute. And it was a very just interesting moment for me, like thinking of the, the sort of superficial, almost in like a television sense, in a sitcom sense of like, oh, the hijinks that character A and character B got into. And then, oh, by the end of the episode, it's all resolved and we forget about it and move on. Because that's, that's the format. That's, that's the style. We have some, some crazy situation and ultimately it gets resolved. Um, but if that crazy situation or if a crazy situation was to appear in a world life, if somebody was to take such a strong point of view or represent something so surprising or odd or unusual or dump all of this baggage, um, what would that actually mean in the real world? What would you have to do to get to that place to actually talk to another human being in that way? Um, and that was really telling, um, and uh, it's, it's kind of how I've always digested stories. Um, I've always wondered about the depth and the meaning behind what's, what's actually going on. Um, but starting with sort of a superficial idea, like a kind of a shower idea of like, oh, that would be, that would be weird. That, that seems high stakes. That seems like there's some drama there. Um, but digging into the hurt, um, that was really interesting, you know, and I, and I think that's helped it be, it was a, it was a finalist for the Heidemann. It, it's been, um, it's been published in a non-licensing anthology with uh, uh, Benita Springs Performing Arts Center in Florida. And now it's going to be in this collection, which is a licensing anthology. And I think that there's something, there's something to the absurdity of the situation, but then there's also something I, I hope um, to the turn and to the, to the acknowledgement and the engagement with, with feelings, with resentment, with hurt and with hopefully resolution. So Seven Deadly Tens is available at originalworkspublishing.com and also Amazon. Um, and Original Works can also handle all of the licensing if you're interested in producing any or all of the plays. Um, they're really great folks. They'll take good care of you.